Hello and welcome to Watch Parties here at CCC. We are so excited that you're here to pursue Jesus with us. And if you've been watching for any length of time, you know that we've been going through the 99 Essential Doctrines put out by the Gospel Project to grow as disciples of Jesus. And before we dive into that today, I just want to invite you to our Rooted course. Rooted is an online course that we provide for people to get more involved here at CCC. It's some videos that you watch, some questions you answer, and if you're interested in that at all, you can visit the link in the description below or our website at cccbrockport.org slash rooted. So today we are actually in the redemption segment, another week in the redemption segment, and we are talking about the virgin birth and sinlessness of Jesus. What a, what a topic those two are. <laughs> and no, it's not Christmas, and yes, we're talking about the virgin birth. Last week, if you watched uh, the Watch Party video, you know that we covered Jesus' deity and his humanity. And a huge part of his humanity is the virgin birth, that he was physically born just like us. But the difference from us is that he was actually conceived by the Holy Spirit. And the Bible affirms this. The Bible affirms that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin. It's very specific about that. Actually, in Matthew 1.18, it says, This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. So this virgin birth affirms the historical authenticity of the incarnation, where the eternal Son of God, Jesus, took on human flesh. The virgin birth is also really significant in that it serves as a reminder of Old Testament prophecies, while also affirming both the deity and humanity of Jesus Christ. Um, we see this in Isaiah 7, specifically in verse 14. It says, all right, then the Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and she will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. So Isaiah prophesied this and then we see the fulfillment of that prophecy in Matthew, um, talking about Mary conceiving as um, a virgin through the Holy Spirit. And the reason this is so important is the fact that Jesus had to be conceived through yeah. the Holy Spirit and a virgin. Jesus was made like us in every way except for one thing, and that is a sinful nature. Every human father produces a son or daughter with his sin nature. This is the way of the world after the fall, after what happened in the garden with Adam and Eve. David actually says in Psalm 51, 5, For I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. We are all born with a fallen nature but except for Jesus because he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. So if Joseph was a real father of Jesus, or Mary had been sleeping around with some guy named Larry, Jesus would not be spotless, he would not be innocent, and he would not be perfectly holy. And as a result, we would not have a mediator and we would have no salvation. So this is really important. The virgin birth, which we only read at Christmas time, is really <laughs> important for us to understand because it gives Jesus as our Savior. Yeah, and... Out of that, um, after he was born, he lived a complete sinless life. While the uh, Bible affirms the full humanity of Jesus, it also affirms that Jesus was completely sinless mm -hmm. uh, from birth to when he died on the cross. I, I mean, Sarah and I are not parents, but I know as a kid, as a child, I definitely sinned. I definitely uh, disobeyed uh, my parents. And parents watching this, I'm sure you can only imagine... Uh, if having your child just literally grow up perfect, like not yeah. sinning, never like having to like correct them uh, because they uh, lived a complete sinless life. Unfortunately, that is not true. But for Jesus, this is the reality was that mm -hmm. it was true for him as a child, as a preteen, a teen, a young adult, all the way up into his 30s when he uh, before he was led to the cross. He did not sin. 2 Corinthians 5.21 assures us of this. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin mm -hmm. that we could be made right with God through Christ. Hebrews 7.26 says even, he is the kind of high priest we need because he is holy and blameless, unstained by sin. He has been set apart from sinners and has been given the highest place of honor in heaven. So yes, Jesus never sinned, but also he was human. And so he did experience temptation. Uh, so it wasn't that he was just God and uh, he didn't have the opportunity, but he was tempted just like mankind. And we see this clear example in Matthew 4 when Jesus was in, Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted by Satan. And you got to picture this. Jesus was fasting for for 40 days. And so 
Satan was tempting him to turn these stones into bread and eat. This was a real temptation. This wasn't like probably an easy no. Uh, again, Jesus knew that he was to go to the cross and he event eventually to establish the kingdom of God and the church, like all that, he knew the, that he was going to have to suffer going to the cross. So Satan was tempting him with, hey, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world if you just bow down to me. But but Jesus did not give in to temptation. He did not sin because he clung to scripture. And we get this confirmed for us in Hebrews 4.15. It says the high priest of our uh, the high priest of ours understands our weaknesses mm -hmm. for he faced all the same testings we do yet he did not sin so what does this all mean for us for me for Sarah for you Jesus was the perfect and spotless lamb that was offered up in our place to yeah. take on all of our sin and so there's no sin that is not covered by his blood. Mm -hmm. uh, in the Old Testament, we see that there was, there had to be sacrifices done mm -hmm. like for, to make people clean, to make people purified and made right with God. There would need to be a spilling of blood to atone for sins. And how many know it wasn't just one goat and then it was all said and done. It was multiple goats, multiple bull, mm -hmm. bulls, uh, sheep and rams had to be sacrificed because people kept sinning. They had to be atoned for their sins to be made right with God. Mm -hmm. But because of what Jesus has done, that no longer needs to happen. Romans 8, 3, uh, just to end our time here, uh, says this clearly for us. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did what the law could not yeah. do. He sent his own, his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. So we can take confidence now in our day, in our life, knowing that Jesus was uh, born of a virgin, conceived by the Holy Spirit, lived a sinless life, and died so that we can walk in freedom. And so now, guys, I'm really excited for you guys to get into your discussion time. Pause the video if you need to, but really just dive deep, uh, get vulnerable in these questions. But we thank you so much for joining us for this week for our watch parties, Pursuing Jesus Together. And we can't wait for next week's watch party. Or uh, if we don't see you this Sunday, uh, have a great week and we'll see you next time.
Thank you.